I just want to thank a few uh, people and the co-sponsors. The co-sponsors are CanPalNet, Canada-Palestine Association, the Center for the Comparative Study of Muslim Societies and Cultures at SFU, BIAC, that's the Boycott Israeli Apartheid Coalition, Anjapi, United Network for Justice and Peace in Palestine and Israel, Building Bridges Vancouver, Independent Jewish Voices Vancouver, the SFU English Department, um, Solidarity for Palestinian Human Rights, that's SPHR at UBC, the Critical Race and Post-Colonial Feminist Theory Group at UBC, the Social Justice Committee of the Ut Unitarian Church Vancouver, the SFU Institute for the Humanities, Flux Design, and MAWO, the Mobilization Against War and Occupation. So thank you so much to all the co-sponsors. Um, additionally, I want to do a special call out to the individuals who helped a lot. Um, Brian Campbell, uh, my teammate in uh, Seriously Free Speech Committee. Murray Bush, who designed the wonderful posters that you have all seen either online or in print. David Mivisir, who took care of uh, all of the, uh, most of the tech uh, stuff, getting things onto Facebook. Uh, and Karen DeVito and John Turnbull, who were running the books uh, store outside, which I hope that during the um, break you will uh, patronize. Uh, so I'm going to turn it over first to Cease Weiss a First Nations medicine woman who will do an official welcome, and then to Paul Sedra of Simon Fraser University Center for Muslim Studies who will introduce Stephen Salaita. Uh, I've also been asked for everyone to turn off their cell phones because there is someone here who has a sensitivity to the waves. Um, so please do that. Cease Weiss. Chok mahat, chok mahat, chok mahat siam and siai, twice to not queens nas. Chok mahat, welcome to uh, the village of Kamkomalai. It's uh, the big name that's been given to what Vancouver is today. There are many villages along here on the waterfront and inland, some of which are Lok Lokai, which is very close to here. Lok Lokai and Komkomalai both make references to the maple trees, which for me is probably my favorite of all the, the trees in this area besides the cedar tree. And, and the reason being, which Stephen will probably appreciate this, is that uh, the maple trees have moss on them. And, on, and in the moss are little ferns sticking out. So if you're if you get a chance to wander around through Stanley Park while you're here, uh, go, up and, uh, go up and hug one of those trees and uh, see if you can't get some of the rhizomes off the fern. It's for your throat, it's for your stomach, it, it makes you feel good. Uh, it's the way that our people would sing for the entire winter. This is the winter village site of the, uh, the three different uh, peoples that have continued to dwell here. The Qaumish Oth Al Khamea, the Tslewa Tooth, and the Khumathquiam Al Khamea. So these are the three nations you know in this area. We've continued to share these lands and waterways. Uh, we do our best to live in harmony. It doesn't always work, but you know, I think when we follow our spiritual, traditional, and cultural ways and follow our artistic, creative minds, you know, everything comes to a better place of being. So this song I'm gonna share with you tonight came from our summer village. And I like singing it at this time of year because it's called Tum Tum, the Tum Tum Slolom. Slolom is sacred song. And Tum Tum means winter. So we're in the heart of winter now. And this song uh, is about the snowbird. And I believe that when our people, because we were semi-nomadic, that when we left, the winter villages after, which is where we are now in the winter village land. And when we left the winter villages and went back into the mountains to the summer villages, I think that one of the first things we saw was that, that snowbird going back into the glaciers where the snow exists all year round. So this is Tums Tum Slolum. It comes from the wife of Chief Billy 
And the, re the other reason I love this song is that I watched our people bring our forests back through a lot of work, and I learned this song through spending over a decade going to stand up and bring our rights back to that land. So it's the only part of our lands and waterways that hasn't been entirely brought back to us. We ended the logging, and we ended a lot of the violence that happened in those mountains to, uh, to eco-warriors, the, the people that stood up for the land and water. So this is Tum Tum Slolem. We'll see him. Chukmahat. <coughs> It's, uh, it's really tremendous to have the opportunity also to welcome uh, Stephen here. Um, Stephen is uh, the author of such works as Anti-Arab Racism in the USA, uh, The Holy Land in Transit, Colonialism and the Quest for Canaan, um, Arab American Literary Fictions, Cultures and Politics, and The Uncultured Wars, Arabs, Muslims, and the Poverty of Liberal Thought. Um, as you can gather from the titles of these works, uh, there's an astonishing breadth to Stephen's work, which brings together such fields as indigenous studies, Arab American studies, and comparative literature. Uh, Stephen's taught at the University of Wisconsin Whitewater, Virginia Tech, and as many of you no doubt know, he was to take up a position at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign when he was effectively fired this past year for comments that he had made on Twitter. Of course, Stephen's case has generated an enormous amount of commentary and debate. I think the size of the crowd here is testament to it, um, both among academics generally and specifically within the University of Illinois community. But I have to confess that this debate has left me quite shaken at a distinctly personal level, for a university administrator to strike at the professionalism of such a productive and well-respected colleague feels like an affront to all of us who have taken up the Middle East as a field of scholarly inquiry. And so I really want to thank you, Stephen, for coming to share your expertise and your experience here with us today. <laughs> 